Hi everyone, Robot Man here. We're going to learn how to use these sensors. So the first sensor we're looking at is the force sensor, or some people call it a touch sensor, and it's basically a button. We need to attach that to the robot somehow. Sometimes you need to attach bigger pieces to the smaller sensors so that they can go on your robot easier. So I've just attached it to a beam, and I'm going to use some little black pieces to attach that to the robot. And there it needs to be plugged into port. I always plug the button into port B, just so it's easy to remember. B for button. And when you're coding a simple robot, you've got to make sure that you tell the hub which ports are being used for the movement motors. So you need to grab the pink block and the pink block that says set movement motors. And we plugged them into C and D, so make sure that it says C and D when you set the movement motors. That's the first block, it has to be there if you want your car to move. And then you can adjust the speed, maximum would be 100%, and then you can say start moving. Well, after you've done that, we want it to bump into the wall. And there is a block that's called when, and it's in the events tab. If you choose the events tab, you can choose a block that says when, and then inside the little hexagon there, you can put a sensor block and to say when the button is pressed we can get it to go backwards so make sure it says B because we plugged the button into port B and then we're just going to go back to the pink movement motors and say start moving but change the arrow to the opposite way so that the car goes in the opposite direction when the button is pressed and you'll notice now that when I turn it on and I press the button now you'll see that it goes the other way so the goal is here, we're going to put it on the ground, we're going to run it, we're going to see if we bump into the wall, and then it will come back. And then I'll stop it on the iPad. Very good. So you can also add things to your button or force sensor to make it a bit easier for it to get pressed. Sometimes I use an axle with a little piece on it to hold the wheel in place. And then the wheel can go inside the button and create like a monster button. And when it hits the wall on just about any angle, the button will be pressed. That's another thing you can do with the force sensor. Now we're going to have a look at a different type of sensor. This one's called the ultrasonic sensor. And that basically detects distance. It detects, it detects things that are a close distance. So the closer something is, when something is a certain distance, you can get your robot to do something. So we need to attach it to the front of the robot somehow. And it's going to be on the front because we're going to get it to detect the wall. When it sees the wall, we're going to get to go backwards. In fact, we're going to code it so that when it says, sees the walls within 15 centimeters, we're going to go backwards. But you do need to plug it in. And we'll just plug it into port A for now. Port. So I just got rid of the code from the previous sensor. I'm going to add in the ultrasonic sensor port, um, block there. And instead of percentage, I'm going to change that to centimeters. I think percentage is a bit confusing, and I think centimeters is very logical. So I'm going to say when it gets within 15 centimeters, we're going to get the robot to go backwards. And you'll see it doesn't get that close, and it goes backwards. We could always update the code and change it. Sometimes I might say 5 centimeters, so change it to 5 centimeters. And when it gets a bit closer this time, it's going to go backwards. The next sensors we're going to look at are the light sensors or color sensors. So basically this one to start with we'll get to detect color and we do that by putting it to the, on the front of the robot again and we're going to plug it in the port A again just because it's easy. Plug it in the port A again it doesn't matter which port you plug it into you'll see that it's on when you plug it in you'll see a light coming out of it and it's going to detect color. So we're going to put a piece of color in front of it and it will show up. Now if you look on the iPad, you can actually hold the yellow brick in front of the robot and you'll see if your sensor is working properly. The actual icon that looks like the sensor is plugged into port A there. You can see that it changes color when you put the yellow color in front of it. You could put a green brick in front of it and you'll see on your iPad that a green dot appears underneath the sensor. So you know it's good to go and we're going to use the top sensor block called when A is color red but we're going to change it to yellow and we're going to do exactly the same thing it's going to see the yellow then it's going to go backwards okay so you can say when any sensor sees or does something you can get it to do something 
Now you can also make it a light sensor. So this is useful because you could get it, for example, to follow a line or to get to the edge of the table and reverse. But for this example, we're going to get rid of the color sensor and we're going to choose another block that's a bit further down that it says when A is a reflection of a certain percentage. Now percentage is a little bit confusing, but it's not really. If you remember to look back on your iPad and look at this little icon here and look underneath the sensor now and change it. You can tap on it and change it from a color sensor to a reflecting sensor. So tap on that and it will see it will now give you a percentage of how much light it is reflecting. So it gives you a score out of 100. The brighter it is, the higher the number. And when it's on the green, on the green felt, it's actually reflecting about 30 something percent. But when I put it over the black, then it's a lot less light reflected. In fact, it's about 13 or 14 percent. So we just need the code to say, for example, that when it's less than 20 percent, like when it's 13, we're going to get it to go backwards. So make sure it's plugged in the right port, port A, and we're going to change less than to it. Make sure it's less than and change it to 20 percent. So now when it's less than 20, it's going to go backwards. At the moment, it's about 30 something. See the black and goes backwards. So that's pretty cool. So you can make your robot follow lines and do all sorts of things. If you found this video useful, check out some of my other ones or even subscribe.